speed sports. And so no skids, no techs, especially in the upper curves. Very important. Here comes an intermediate time out of Layette. 46-26 is a good time. They're hanging in there very nicely. Anything in, the anything in the 111s would be outstanding world-class time. Going through the big labyrinth, they're really having to move now. It becomes more dangerous now. It's been time-consuming if you get in trouble. Azura, a good Azura, and into Bianca. Here's where you could turn over if you're not driving precisely. They're having a very good run. Jim Morgan and Tom Becker headed for the finish. There's the total time for three runs that they have to beat. 1-11-79. That's a great run for the young American team of Jim Morgan and Tom Becker. They can really be proud of what they've done in the first three runs of this championship. And looking forward to the Olympic Games in Innsbruck next year, a team can make a lot of improvement in the 11, or 11 months or so that are left, right? That's for sure, Jim. And uh, these fellows are definitely in contenders for the future. Our driver, George Heibel of West Germany, is waiting for the all-clear to begin his run. And while he's waiting, we're going to show you what can happen to a driver who is anything less than experienced on this course. Here's what happened to the Australian team of Philip Morgan Giles and Mike Wallace. Wallace, by the way, is a native of Wichita, Kansas. This was yesterday. Right, uh, Jim, and uh, they're coming into the Layette. They had a little trouble beforehand. And this is a, a big swooping curve, and you come dropping out of that into the first of the big labyrinths, and you have to get on that labyrinth early and get off early. And if you come on late, like they are there, and turn over on your side, there, there you've got 375 pounds of metal crashing you into the sides, and of course that's when things get a little bit tense. Now the brakeman has fallen off, the driver's trying to get out, he's out, and they both were okay. And here comes the sled by itself through. The sled actually will go down the remainder of the course by itself. Here's the slow-mo. You see them coming up at the end where they should be coming down, and they just immelmaned over onto their sides and went into the second curve on their backs. And that's, that's when it really starts to hurt and when bad accidents can, of course, happen. Amazing that neither man was even scratched. Back up at the top now. Here is Heibel and Oldwater. They're in second place in this championship, coming to the third of four runs. This, by the way, is George Heibel's 40th birthday today. Right, well, I welcome to this next decade, and they're a good starting team. And here they come, 578. Real good start for them. In these upper straights, those curved runners with only about two inches of each runner on the ice and rounded, not cutting in at all, is very hard to control the set, and the driver has to be absolutely total concentration and he lost it a little bit there and that's going to hurt in terms of loss of momentum and he's hit it again he's having not a good run up here because if you have a skid or a tick in the upper parts of the course that's a lot of lost momentum and you never get it back because the only thing he's got going for you is gravity now he did have a good start and a 46 19 is a good intermediate time there's the big labyrinth you start to flow a lot faster and you're really rocketing along now maybe 80 85 miles an hour into Azura is a flat curve, and you can come off that badly, but he took it all right. Bianca into the final straight, really bouncing along, flying just like a runaway horse. Well, he can take the temporary lead with 112.27 bases, and he gets 112.04. Well, he did take the lead from the other West German sled, but you, as you indicated, Vic, that is not an outstanding run for him up in the 112s. So George Heibel and Fritz Oldwater are the new leaders. In second place at the moment is Wolfgang Zimmer and Peter Ochschneider. However, the lead sled is yet to come. Remember that. Here's the team leading this competition, coming to the third run. Giorgio Alvera, hotelier from Cartina, Italy, and his brakeman, Franco Perugetti. They need a time of 112.55 or better to take the lead. They should be able to do that. He's a good starting team. They're big men. They're fast. They're seasoned in world competition. He has three fourth places going for him into this competition. Watch that start now. 568 is a very, very good start. This could be a run that could break the record. Jim, they had a very good start. He's driving very well in these upper fiddly little straights. He obviously has the feel of this course, and he... Must be feeling good now with a 7 tenths lead going into 30-92. He broke 31 for the intermediate time. And he's doing beautifully in the layout. Notice the people cheering along the side as he comes down. And here comes an intermediate time out of layout. The first swooping down 45-32, a low 45. He's going for a record. There's no question about it. Here comes the big labyrinth. Flowing back and forth. He's really moving now. Probably 80-85. Just flying in the straights, but absolute control. He has a feel for it. 
Azura, a perfect drive coming up. Very high in Bianca. But he swooped out of it down into the finish straight. Around the corner, and here it comes. This is a big crowd letting him hear it as the time comes. 1-10-99, a sensational run for the leaders. Giorgio Algaro and Franco Barroquette. Missed the record by four one-hundredths of a second. But easily they'll lead this competition coming to the final run. Remember, there's only one left. So here are the standings at the end of three rounds. Alvera of Italy, the leader. Heibel 